We start with Cynthia Hind, a most extraordinary woman who is the principal investigator on the whole African continent. I asked Cynthia what ufology meant in a culture so different from the technological West in which it first arose to the public's attention. Well, the, the, I think the main thing to bear in mind is the fact that most of the people are not exposed to the media as such. Not that we don't have radio and television, we do, but we don't get UFO coverage. Um, I think they're a little bit superstitious about it, and so we don't get much uh, uh, from programs here in the UK or even in America telling them. So they virtually, although they have lots of radio programs, they don't know about UFOs. So when I get a report of any consequence that I follow through, they don't realize we're dealing with UFOs. And at one time, I think it was John Spencer, he made a point that um, I had told them they were seeing UFOs. That's not true because I don't lead the witnesses at all. The particular one you're referring to was a fellow called Clifford Muchenna, who was one of a group of 20 workmen at a forestry estate, and a man who was one of the bosses there phoned me up, and then he said to me, did I know that they had some of his workers had seen a UFO? Well, I didn't know, but I went out immediately. It was about um, 300 miles away, and I drove, I had to stay overnight and interviewed them all and I just said, tell me your story. And the interesting thing was that they had seen a ball of light rolling across the lawns, it had rolled up a wall and burst into flame and Clifford Muchenna, who was one of the more responsible workers, had run to ring a bell which was kept there for an emergency. While he was ringing the bell, this ball of flame gathered together climbed down the wall, well they used the expression walk down the wall, went past behind him and burst into flame again in another place. And um, when this happened he was aware of three figures standing there. So he quickly ran towards them thinking that one of them was Andrew Connolly who was his immediate boss. And he was shouting, Mr Connolly, Mr Connolly, to tell him what had happened when the three figures turned around in unison, but slowly, and when they faced him, he saw this brilliant light emanating from the heads, and it was like a power, because he fell to the ground. And I said, but they were three meters away from you, about 10 feet, how come you fell to the ground? And he said their power was so strong. Now, when he described them to me, he said they had shiny suits, and you might remember that I told you there's no word in Shona, Moshona, which is their language, for the word silver. So when I wanted him to be more explicit, he took a coin out of his pocket, silver coin, and he said that was what they were wearing. And then I said, Clifford, who did you think they were? And he said, I knew who they were. They were my ancestors, the ghosts of my ancestors. And I said, but your ancestors wore fur and uh, monkey skins and lion's teeth. They didn't wear silver suits. And he thought for a bit and then he said, well, times change. It's <laughs> a lovely story, story. Uh, Cynthia. The remarks you made earlier clearly imply that contamination, for want of a better term, could well play... Um, a serious part in, in the nature of the stories that we get uh, in, in the West. I mean, clearly science fiction has, uh, I think, played a, a big influencing part. I, I think you've got a big advantage that there doesn't seem to be that kind of influence. No. Um, why, though, do you think the, the natives that you've dealt with think of the kind of events that we regard as UFOs as, as visits from their ancestors. Well, that's what they relate to. That's part of their culture. You know, they have several um, sort of ghost figures in their culture. In the folklore, certainly of Zimbabwe, which I know well, uh, one of them is if you don't... Like, for instance, if you died, and you died in England, and you were in a Zimbabwean, and they buried you in the ground, and they didn't put your head pointing towards your home, you would haunt them 
because you were not satisfied that you were facing where you lived. And then you might get another ghost who um, feels that he's been badly done by, by the tribe, and he will come and haunt. But you also get good ghosts who come with good news. They have a variety of supernatural beings who appear so that ghosts are not offensive necessarily to the African people and they accept this but they don't know anything about in fact when I said after we had discussed the whole thing and I said have you ever thought it might be anything else and they said what do you mean and I said well you know man has now gone to the moon there might be for want of a better way to describe it there might be people living up in the stars there in the skies and they said what do you mean on the moon so i said yes man has been to the moon and they said oh no oh no only god walks on the moon so you see the whole concept is totally different from the way we would look at it